we have shown this for random arbitrary a and b's out of those field. It's out of this field, I'm sorry. Papa Flamby's Earth Encounter. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, are you here? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Papa Fleming's Advent Calendar. And we are going to do something really cool today because we are going to prove, using only the field axioms on the real numbers, for example, that, well, zero times anything is going to result in zero and that negative times negative is going to be positive. So we are going to do this rigorously using only the axioms. Take a look into Wikipedia what the field axioms are. So they basically just state that we have the distributive law, that we have, um, well, a group under multiplication and we have a group under addition using those field elements. This is all they really state and we are going to go ahead and get started with the first one. So zero times anything is going to be zero. So why not start off with zero times a and we already have introduced the piano axioms and the corresponding addition and multiplication. We are also going to make use of this right here. So what is zero exactly? Well, something plus zero is going to result in the something itself. So zero is nothing but zero plus zero times a. But we have the distributive laws. So let's use the distributivity to drag this a into everything. So we have zero times a plus zero times a. And well, since we have the closure under multiplication. This is just some element in this field. And we also know that our field elements together with the addition form a group. So that means for every zero times a, we have a negative zero times a as the additive inverse. So why not subtract zero times a on both sides? That's equivalent to saying we have zero times a minus zero times a. Well, by definition of a group, this is going to result in the identity, namely zero is equal to zero times a plus zero times a minus zero times a. This is once again zero, but something plus zero is the something itself. So we end up with zero is equal to zero times a. And we have introduced the multiplication, namely that something times zero is zero once again. So we have shown this using the field axioms and now for the exciting part. So before being able to prove that negative times negative is indeed positive, we have to prove something else before. It might seem obvious at first sight, but it's not, we have to prove it. Namely that in parentheses negative a times parentheses closed, b is equal to negative a times b. It's obvious, but why does it make sense? We are going to prove it using the field axioms only. And I would just like to start off with a true statement right here. And you see, we are going to manipulate this right hand side right here. We have the right distributivity distributivity, Ugh, I'm sorry. So why not factor out the b on here? So we end up with negative a plus a times b. But also our group under addition is abelian, meaning all the elements in their commute. So negative a plus a is the same as a minus a times b. But you see, this is something minus something resulting in the identity element. So zero times b, but we have proven that this is nothing but zero. So right now we are going to end up with negative a times b plus a times b is the same as zero. Closure under multiplication, meaning this is just an element of the field, so we can establish an inverse to this positive one, just like before. So that's equivalent to saying we have negative a times b plus a times b minus a times b being equal to, well, negative a times b. That's an equivalence relation. We have the cancellation rule, which holds for all natural numbers, real numbers, etc. And you see, this minus this is going to result in zero. So this is just zero. And well, something plus zero is the something itself. So that's equivalent to saying we have negative a times b is equal to negative a times b. It might seem obvious, but we have to prove stuff in before. And now for the really exciting part. <laughs> To finish things off, we are just going to take a look at another true statement once again, which is exactly this right here. And well, we have just established something, namely that negative a times b is the same as negative a times b, but in parentheses though. This is parentheses, parentheses negative a times b. But we are working in the field of something, so that means we have the associative laws meaning we can just get rid of those parentheses right here. And you see, this is cool. So now we have 
this left hand factor so we can use the left distributivity to factor out this negative a. So we have negative a times negative b plus b. Once again our elements under addition commute so we can interchange those. This is going to result in zero so we have negative a times zero is just zero by the first proposition we have established. Overall at the moment we are going to end up with negative a times negative b plus negative a times b is equal to zero. And you see we have a positive sign right here. But what I would like to do is to just add another term on both sides, namely a times b. We can do this, we have the cancellative laws in this field. So we end up with negative a times negative b plus negative a times b plus a times b is equal to a times b. It does make sense, you can add three on both sides and just get rid of it. Once again it doesn't quite matter. And by our law right here we also know that this is just negative a times b in parentheses but we can get rid of those outer parentheses. So this is just negative a times b. And now once again we can use the right distributivity for example to just factor this b out. So we have negative a times negative b plus and now we have negative a plus a times b. This is going to result in zero once again by those commutativity arguments and zero times b is just zero in the end. But let's continue this. So we have this plus zero is this but something plus zero is just a something itself. So that's equivalent to saying that we have negative a times negative b is equal to a times b. And then we are done. Negative times negative is positive. And you don't have to take a look at all the cases. We have shown this for random arbitrary a and b's out of those field. Psst, out of this field, I'm sorry. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, you can find all the other stuff in the description. And until the next video, have fun the day. See ya. Filmen. <laughs> no.